Uh, my talk's going to be around providing supports to people with learning disability, transitioning into older age. Um, this project was firstly funded by the R&D office, uh, by the Bamford Call. It was a three-year project, and we're just coming to the end of this project uh, in June. The, the research member of staff on the project is Dr Lisa Trainer hannah Hannah, who couldn't be here this afternoon. And I would just like to acknowledge the five trusts and the public health agency and the foundry and the community sector hall who engaged in this, this project. This afternoon's presentation will focus on the, the background, policy, what we set out to do, what we did, then what we found, the recommendations and the specific uh, strategic direction we, we, should, we should take. So what do we know about uh, people with learning disabilities? Firstly, people with learning disabilities are living longer, now into their sixth, seventh and eighth decades. Aging starts younger in people with learning disabilities. It, well, there's been a consensus agreement that maybe about 50 years of age that aging takes place, but for people with Down syndrome, aging would start earlier at 40 years of age. Most people in Northern Ireland, about 80%, live with the family carer, and many of those family carers would be mothers, and when the mother has maybe passed on, it would be um, a sister, not normally a sister. But there are fathers who are taking on this role when their wives pass on. Now, understanding this context of the changing demographics of people with learning disabilities, this will increase the demand for mainstream older person services, learning disability services, and also services to meet the needs of older people with learning disability as they continue to age through the next number of decades. Despite 30 years of research into identifying the needs of ageing, into the needs of ageing family carers, the needs of these family carers continue to remain unmet. And this has significant consequences in times when resources are tight. Well, what do we know? Firstly, there's a lack of forward planning for when, when people with learning disabilities transition into older age. Therefore, people with learning disabilities could be excluded and also excluded and isolated. Current models no longer fit, are no longer fit for purpose, nor are they a viable or sustainable option. And these current models will be building-based day centres, residential provision, respite. These will be unable to meet the change in demographics of this population if we don't address them. And commissioners, policy makers, and service providers must rethink current family support and traditional service models, pulling together existing resources and placing greater emphasis on family-centred care and support and create new community-based initiatives. And when I say services, I'm talking about learning disability services, and I'm also talking about older people or older persons' programmes of care. As already mentioned to, by Janice earlier, Equal Lives, the Equal Lives report on the Bamford Action Plan have identified ageing as an area that required specific planning for, this, for learning disability services. In addition, the United Nations Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities stated, sorry, stated that all persons with a disability have the right to live independently and be included in the community. Five years on from transforming your care, little has changed for older people with learning disabilities and their ageing family cares. This is despite the Northern Ireland Learning Disability Service Framework recommending that all people with a learning disability aged 50 years and over should have the impact of ageing taken into consideration when assessing and managing their needs and the options to remain in their own home with their family care for as long as possible with the appropriate care and support to do so. So that's the, the background to your presentation today, to your study. And this is what we set out to do. There were three core objectives. Firstly, to identify appropriate services for people with learning disability as they transition into old age. Secondly, to identify the appropriate supports for older family carers to continue the care for adults with a learning disability into the future. And thirdly, to identify the policy and practice implications from a local and international, from local and international research. 
So this study was a four-phase model. But before we got into the actual research, we reviewed the international literature on policy and practice for older people with learning disabilities and their family carers. This study involved, was involved across the whole of Northern Ireland. Uh, the five trusts were involved. We involved the public health agency, the local councils, housing, education, and a large number of the foundry and, and, and community sector. And like I'm saying, it was four phases, and each of the phases involved different groups of people. The first phase was a qualitative study where we looked at focus groups with adults with learning disability aged over the age of 50, their family carers and frontline staff, nurses, community nurses, social workers, residential staff, to look at what is ageing and what is retirement and what, would, what, what are services required for this population. Uh, the second, and we interviewed over 100 of, of, of these people. The second involved 15 one-to-one -one interviews with learning disability and older person service program managers of care. They gave them to look at what would, practice, what would uh, a service look like. Thirdly, we undertook a survey of over 100 adults with learning disability and their carers, again looking at needs and future needs. And then lastly, we brought all this information together in phase four, where we undertook three conferences, one in Portadown, one in Temple Patrick, and one in Derry, where we had 100, over 180 stakeholders from all these groups to look at the way forward. And this is what's being presented today. So basically, this is the first time anybody has seen this research, so this is hot off the press. So what did we find? Well, there was four key findings to this study. Firstly, was around what is current service provision? We identified that there was a lack of appropriate age, appro there was a lack of age appropriate day opportunities or day activities for older people with learning disabilities. Secondly, there was a shortage of age appropriate residential and supported living accommodation. Thirdly, um, there was a lack of appropriate and flexible respite options. Fourthly, there was a lack of training for staff around the specific needs of older people with learning disabilities and the needs of their ageing carers. And when we looked at both learning disability services and older person services of care, they work in silos, they worked in silos, there was a lack of communication and collaboration between both services, even though they were looking at the same older population. Our second theme identified from, the, from, these, from these four phases was planning for the older person with a learning disability. There was no regional database held to identify the details of who these older people with learning disabilities were and who their family carers were. In relation to the concept of retirement, there was no concept of retirement. People with learning disabilities retire from what? What age do they retire? Do they get a pension? And most importantly, when they were in day services or day opportunities, that was very important for family cares because that was their, their respite. So we, we've actually changed this title of this talk, then this, this, this research, from retirement to looking at transitioning in the older age. And that, because we, because the frontline staff find this difficult, so did services find this difficult as well. How do we plan for something when we weren't sure what it is? Is it retirement? Is it transition? So again, there was no consensus on, on how, how do we uh, address ageing. There was a lack of future planning, not only by family carers, but also by service providers. Uh, people with a learning disability, some people with a learning disability who were older were also providing care for a mother or father who was ill. And some of those people with learning disabilities were also given out medication as well and, and personal care. There was a lack of um, planning for healthy ageing. So when people become older, they were already in poor health. So that was that, that theme there. The third theme was around family support. So again, the needs of this population were not recognised or resourced within statutory services. There, uh, there was no point of contact for family carers to get practical information or emotional support. Few family carers had actually had a carers assessment and were actually receiving direct payments. A lot of the families were trying to provide support 
but other families found it difficult to engage with other family members. And few families had any assistive technologies or any home adaptations to support the person with learning difficulties as they age, but also for themselves as well. And their last theme was around inclusive communities. Uh, like I said to you earlier, a 10 in the day centre was more than a day placement for adults with learning disability. It was a place where they could connect with their friends and with their peers. And also, it also provided respite for older family carers during the day. Again, people with a learning disability welcomed the opportunity to engage in their local communities with their peers who maybe didn't have learning disabilities. However, this was not common. And there was little opportunities to engage in their local communities. It appeared from our interviews that the communities were largely unaware and unprepared to engage with people with learning disabilities. And they missed this maybe because of fear or a lack of understanding or a lack of contact with people with learning disabilities, a lack of opportunities to engage, and that maybe also because of discriminatory attitudes. And community services rarely made the necessary really reasonable adjustments to their service provisions to engage with this population. So, so what did we identify? We identified from that a number of recommendations. And like I'm saying to you, these have not been shared before. So, and that's what I probably want to spend the, the, most of the minutes with. So the first one was around actually looking at reshaping current service models. So we think that there should be a review of existing day opportunity provision to ensure that it is fit for purpose and meets the change in needs and choices of older people with a learning disability. We should try and develop more housing options, options beyond traditional residential and nursing options, such as supported living, home ownership, co-ownership, and shared lives. We need to develop more flexible and overnight short, short break or respite options to include shared lives, adult family placements, and short breaks. And we should provide training to all staff within the learning disability services, but also within the older person's program of care, to improve their attitude, their knowledge, and their skills about the health needs of older people with learning disabilities. We should also try and develop some protocols and standards for interagency, cross-departmental communication and working, which can identify clear rules and responsibilities and facilitate the sharing of information and hold individuals to account. And each trust should appoint a champion of fam for families of older people with learning disabilities based, upon, based upon, across both learning disability services and the older person's programme of care to bring a coordinating role of services within each trust. And we also need to revisit how services are commissioned for older people with a learning disability and their ageing family carers to ensure that all service users have access to supports which meet their needs and ensures their continued inclusion within their communities. If we think about planning for the older person with a learning disability specifically, we need to develop a regional electronic register or database. Um, this would predict the likely rise in numbers over the coming 10, 20, 30 years. We also should think about older people with a learning disability. Living in the community should be offered a range of meaningful day opportunities and activities that includes a tailor-based, uh, tailored support to promote independence of their activities of living. Older people with learning disabilities living in the community should be offered where appropriate environmental assessment and modification to aid independent functioning and prescription of assistive technology. Annual health checks, which do currently take place in Northern Ireland, should again think about healthy ageing and the health action plans developed. Future planning needs to take place uh, early, not just in the latter years of life. It should include an emergency plan. It should look at the contribution of siblings. 
The needs of older people with learning disability who develop dementia must be addressed within the Northern Ireland Dementia Strategy. And people with a learning disability who become carers for their parents need to be recognised and supported the same way of the supports offered to other carers. So our third recommendation focuses around the family. There needs to be a single point of contact where families can access practical information and signposting about all services, support opportunities within their local area. All families should be offered an enhanced carers assessment based around the family. And families should be encouraged and supported to use self-directed support and direct payments. Carers and families, including siblings, should have access to education and training designed to provide support and optimise their ability to care for the older person with a learning disability. Family support programmes Family support programmes should be individualised, multifaceted and focused on early intervention and delivered over multiple sessions. Each trust should develop appropriately resourced family care support groups and also sibling support groups that focus around providing practical information, emotional support, signposting and empowering family carers to take control of their lives. And again, we should identify assistive technology solutions that promote continued and independence and monitor and support the family carer's health in order and for them to maintain caring things like telehealth and home adaptations. And our last main recommendation was around inclusive communities. The Public Health Agency has a responsibility to reach out and support people to access these services by making the necessary reasonable adjustments to all their mainstream community health programmes to ensure that the people with learning disabilities and their family carers have access. This would include some of their programmes around healthy living, health promotion, health ed education, vaccinations, health issues maybe around men's health, women's health and mental health. Likewise, local councils, each of the 11 local councils in Northern Ireland, have a responsibility to make reasonable adjustments to their mainstream community programmes. For example, learning and education, employment, supports, sports, leisure and recreation, arts, travel, home safety benefits, and also planning for your retirement. Another area would be is to recruit older adults without a learning disability, to mentor and support adults with a, with a learning disability to access and engage in mainstream community older people services, for example, bowling clubs, or volunteering, or men, Men's United, or Men's Sheds, or gardening clubs, etc. We need to sure, we need to coordinate the statutory, voluntary, and community sector to work together to inform the relevant local community organisations of the needs of older people with a learning disability and their ageing family carers, so that they are better prepared to understand and support the needs of this population and include them in their local activities and opportunities. So just coming to, to an end now, a strategic direction would be to establish a family manifesto or a charter to protect the rights of the older people with a learning disability and their ageing family carers, overseeing and guiding on issues such as the carers bill, direct payments and entitlement legislation. To develop a carers bill for Northern Ireland aimed at promoting the rights and requirements of family carers. A cross-departmental working group should be put in place to oversee the establishment and operational management of an expert committee to advise on how services can be developed to meet the needs of these ageing family carers and older people with a learning disability, given the recommend recommendations as listed above. And this committee should have the authority to hold these organisations, the trusts, the councils, the public health agency, and the trust carers champion accountable. All family carers and people with a learning disability should be supported to access the Equality Commission 
Sorry. The Equality Commission and the Law Centre if their needs are not being met. All services providers, that would be statutory and voluntary, need to evidence leadership and share responsibility to build the relationships required to ensure that the existing service models are reshaped and co-designed with people with a learning disability. And to create new cost-effective solutions. New solutions must be proactive and require a change of mindset on the behalf of all stakeholders to enable older people with a learning disability to become more actively involved in their communities and that's to allow positive risk taking. And everyone has a responsibility to ensure that our communities are welcoming and inclusive of, of, all, of all older people with a learning disability and provide it with the opportunities to have their contribution valued and have a real role within the, their individual communities. And lastly, the recommendations from this executive summary should be the outcomes under which leadership are held accountable. And just to conclude, the recommendations from this study clearly identify, both, clearly identify both the strategic and the operational direction for how commissioners, policy makers, service providers, and how they should plan and develop specific services for older people with a learning disability and their family carers in the document. This document should act as a catalyst for trust the plan, for the trusts, the Department of Health, the Public Health Agency, the board, to develop, to plan and develop services to support ageing moving forward. I thank you very much.